In this session, we'll look at a way to organize InfraWorks model data using subsets. On my screen, I have a model that represents a portion of a city block. In addition to what we see on screen, this model also includes some underground utilities. Let's make those utilities a little easier to see. I'll do that by opening the Model Explorer panel, and from here I'll click the toggle to hide the city furniture. I will then change the visual style. I'm going to open the menu and select the style that I created called Utility View. This style has a screened surface property, allowing us to see the utilities underneath. In this case, I have utilities representing water main, storm sewer, and sanitary sewer. Just for a second, I'm going to open the InfraWorks menu, and then we'll open the Data Sources panel. Over here, you can see the shapefile attachments that I've made for each of those utilities, both pipelines and connectors. I'm going to right-click on one of these attachments and choose Configure. I do this to show you that I am mapping attribution from those shape files to the properties here in InfraWorks to help me stylize these utilities. I have also mapped a description attribute, referencing the utility's name, to the description property here in InfraWorks. I've mapped the SU attribute, which represents the quality of the utility's location, to the name property. Each of my shape files also includes the year of the utility's installation. To map that data, I went to the Table tab, and I mapped it to the User Data property. Just by clicking in this field, I opened the menu and selected Year Install. Each of my utility attachments was mapped the exact same way. Let's click OK. I will then go back to Model Explorer. On the Model Explorer panel, we can see a list of all of the feature classes that we have in InfraWorks. If we look within the Utilities category, we'll find that there is a single Pipelines class. That means that all of the pipelines from all of these utilities are stored within this one class. We can see that by clicking the Visibility toggle. This turns off all of the pipelines regardless of utility. Let's click to turn those back on. Likewise, if I come down and click the Highlight button, I can highlight all of the pipelines regardless of utility. Now, having all of the pipes consolidated within this single feature class isn't necessarily a bad thing. I can actually use this to my advantage. For instance, maybe I would like to theme all of these utilities based on the quality of their location. To do that, I'll open the InfraWorks menu, I'll come down and click Analyze, and then I'll click to create a feature theme. Let's click Add. We'll call the theme Sue for Feature Class. I'll select Pipelines. For the property, I'll select Name, that's where I mapped the SU attribute. For distribution in this case, I'll choose Individual Values, and then I'll click OK. Let me mention that I have created an entire video devoted to feature themes. If you're interested, I will leave a link to that video in the description for this one. For right now, we can see that all of the utilities are stylized based on the quality of their location. We can also see a nice legend that identifies the property for each color. Let's click the toggle to turn off the feature theme, and then we'll return to the Model Explorer panel. Having seen that, you may wonder if it's possible to isolate a specific utility, the Storm Sewer, perhaps. Well, we can easily do that by creating a subset from this feature class. To build a subset, I'm going to click the Funnel on the far right side. This brings up the Expression Editor, where we can define a filter, allowing us to select all of the items that will be a member of this new subset. In this case, under the Properties collection, I'm going to open Common. This shows us the properties that are common to the majority of InfraWorks objects. From here, I will double-click Description to add that to the Expression Editor. We'll say Description equals, and then I'll open the Property menu. I'll select Description. Down here, we can see the values from all of the shape files that are associated with that Description attribute. I'm going to double-click Storm Sewer. So in this case, we are saying if the description equals Storm Sewer, you will be a member of this subset. When you get a chance, be sure to come back and explore the many options available in this expression editor. By leveraging the Boolean and mathematical functions, for example, your ability to filter data is only limited by your creativity. For right now, this will be great. Let me click OK, and then we'll name the new subset. I'll call it Storm Sewer and press Enter. As a courtesy, those objects are also selected in the model. I'm going to click on screen to release that selection. Now, if I click the Highlight button associated with this subset, I can see that it's only highlighting the Storm Sewer. Let's toggle that off. I can now use this subset to my advantage. Let's say that we'd like to theme the Storm Sewer based on pipe diameter. I'm going to come back to Feature Themes. We'll create a new theme. I'll call this Storm Pipe Diameters. For Feature Class, notice that new subset acts as its own class. I'll select that. For Property, I'll choose Size X. That represents the property that I mapped the pipe diameter to. For Distribution, I'll choose Individual, and then I'll click OK. I am now theming the Storm Sewer only based on the diameter of the pipe. 
Once again, we'll toggle off the feature theme and we'll return to the Model Explorer panel. We can now take the subset concept even further by creating a subset from a subset. For instance, let's say we're considering a potential utility restoration and we'd like to see all of the storm sewer in this area that is more than 40 years old. If I click the funnel associated with this subset, I can create a subset of the subset. In the expression editor, we'll come back to the common group and we'll drag down and double click user data to add that to the expression editor. We'll say user data, which represents the year of installation, is less than 1978. I will then come down and click OK. We'll name this subset. I'll call it 40 plus years old and press enter. We'll click in the model to release the selection. Now, highlighting this subset shows me all of the storm sewer pipes that are more than 40 years old. Let's look at a couple more things we can do with subsets. If I right click on a subset, I can change its highlight color. I can create a new subset or rename the subset. I can edit the filter associated with the subset. I can also create a copy or delete the subset. To view the data associated with the subset, I can choose View in Data Table. In this case, it's showing me all of the object data associated with the storm pipes that are more than 40 years old. Using the slider, I can drag back and forth to review the values. If I select a row in the table, it will select that object in the model. If I right click, I can export the data for this object or for the entire table. I can also come down and zoom directly to the object in the model. I'm going to press escape to deselect and then we'll close the data table. Now that I'm finished reviewing the utilities, we'll put things back the way they were. I'm going to drag this down and we will release the highlight on this subset. I'll turn the city furniture back on. We'll flip back to the original visual style and then I'll use a bookmark to restore my original view. It's important to note that in this session I've been working with the Pipelines feature class. That being said, these workflows will also work with any of the other feature classes in this panel. So if the time comes that you need more granular control over the data in an InfraWorks model, consider creating some subsets. With a little practice, you can easily query, visualize, and extract data from virtually any objects. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.